Libs. Pounds. The mean weight of babies is 8.9 pounds. I have no idea if that's true. I think I just made it up. That's a pretty big baby. Smaller than my turkey. <laughs> my turkey was worth like three babies. Okay, of course we're going to try to state the claim and state the opposite of the claim. So, first thing you got to be good at is identifying whether you're dealing with a proportion or a mean. Which are we dealing with here? Mean. Definitely mean. So you're talking about, remember, population stuff, parameters, mean or p. Plus not p hat, not x bar. Plus. The reason is you already know everything about x bar. You're going to know that stuff. It's a sample, right? You, you, you're able to take samples. You, what you don't know about is population stuff. These claims are about populations. Now, the mean weight of babies is at most 8.9 pounds. So I know I'm going to have a mean. I know I'm going to have 8.9. You just need to know whether it's equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or less than. What is it? At most 8.9 pounds. At most. We, we deal, we, we certainly understand that the mean has to be less, it could be less than 8.9, right? Now, is there it equals or not? That's the key. Yeah. If you have at most $9, you could have $9 and be okay, right? If you have most 8.9 pounds, it could be equal to. At most includes that equality. That's important because that dictates what your h sub 0 is and what your h sub 1 is. This is one of the most important steps you can do. After that, state the opposite. What's the opposite of mu is less than or equal to 8.9? Strictly greater than. You can't ever have an equal in two spots. Okay, which one is our h sub 0, the claim or the opposite? Which one? Yeah, because the equal sign's right there. We're going to say h sub 0. We'll just simply rewrite it. You're going to write... What? Wherever the equality is, you omit that sign, you just put an equal sign. H sub 1, we don't change anything about that ever. Mu is greater than 8.9. Tell me something, would we be able to prove our claim correct in this case? Would we be able to, after we did all the work, prove our claim correct here? What do you think? Why? Can you ever prove h sub 0 right? No. Our claim is stated as h sub 0. All you can do is prove that wrong. So you wouldn't be able to prove this claim. Ever. You can't prove right. You could prove it wrong, but that is not what you're trying to do. That's not what the statement asks. So when you get to doing this on your own, you better make sure you state your, your claim is correct, right? Now, these claims are going to be given to you. You're not going to have to do that in your homework or your test. But if you, when you get out to real life and you want to actually do this, which happens uh, in a lot of jobs and a lot of fields, if you ever ask to do research on something, you are going to be doing statistics because it deals with samples. Uh, you better state your claims correctly. Otherwise, you're never going to be conclusive on them. That's not good. Okay, last example before we get on into something just a little bit different, our second step in hypothesis testing. So, last one. I'm going to have you, uh, you do this on your own. Piece by piece. First thing you're going to do is look for your claim. So I want you to identify on your own whether you're dealing with a proportion or a mean. Usually it's pretty obvious what you're dealing with. And write down the appropriate symbol. <coughs> now, bless you. Now, with that statement, write down mean is equal to or greater than or equal to or not equal to or less than or equal to or greater than or less than 100 because that's the value you're given. So you should have mean and you should have 100 and you should have some symbol between there. What symbol is it? Equals. Is means equals. Sure. Now you've got to write the opposite of that statement. So you should still have the mu and the 100. What's the opposite of equals? Not equals. Good. 
That's okay. We can have that. We can have that. What this means is, is actually probably the question that they should have asked on the, uh, the soda can one. They don't want it more than 12 ounces, or they don't want it less than 12 ounces, but they also don't want it more, right? They want it exactly equal to 12 ounces. You'd probably test the claim. The claim would be the mean volume of soda is not equal to 12 ounces, then you could actually prove it right or wrong. <clears throat> hey, which one of these is the H sub zero? Do we have to rewrite anything? That's kind of nice, right? We, we don't really have to change anything about this. We're just going to say the mu is equal to 100. Mu is not equal to 100. You'll notice that if h sub 0 is stated as our claim, we also wouldn't be able to prove that one correct. You'd have to prove things like the mean IQ score is not equal to 100, or the mean IQ score is uh, greater than something or less than something. Those at most, those at least, those things aren't provable. They include the equality. Not great for us. Okay, now we're going to move on to something. Do you feel okay with stating these claims the opposite and determining which one is h sub zero and h sub one? How many people feel pretty good about that? Good. Okay. Good. The next thing you do after you do your claim. So this is step number one. No matter what you do, exactly this way, you've got to find what's called the test statistic. The test statistic, hopefully the name implies, is what you use to test the hypothesis. Now there's a couple, there's actually three we'll be dealing with. I'll give you two of them today, one of them later on when we get back to uh, standard deviation. You have two different test statistics. One is more in proportion. P and one is for the mean, mu. For the proportion, for the proportion, oh, this is gonna be great for you. Let's go back to your test, chapter seven. For proportions, did you have an option between Z or T, or was it all of one of them? For proportions. It was always Z for proportions, you remember that? Always Z. For proportions, you're still going to have a Z test statistic. Notice, please watch this on the board. Do you notice there's no alpha over 2? This is not a critical value. This is different. This is a test statistic. It is a typical Z score like what you've done before. A typical Z score like what you've done before is a sample measure minus a population parameter over the standard deviation over the square root of n. That's it. Okay, one big thing. Big, big thing here. Please note very carefully that this right here, that, that P and that Q, I want to make sure I can double check this for you. Right in your, right in your table too. That P and your that Q, do those have a hat on them? So are, is this P the same as this P? Is this P the same as this P? Yes. These P's are the same. So this is going to come from your claim. This right here is the only thing, and this right here is the only thing that comes from your sample. Is that information? You okay with this one? It's a z-score. It's just called the test statistic. Test statistic. Now. That that thing. Now, now mean, we had two options for mean. We had a Z. When did you use a Z, folks? When did you use a Z? Well, of clearly four proportions, but when you're talking about means, when did you use a Z? Wow, okay. Go back and read chapter seven. When did you use a T? Was there a difference between Z and T? 
If you didn't know there was a difference between Z and T, you got fours on a lot of your problems, or zeros, on your test. Sample, Sample what? Standard deviation. Standard deviation. It was all about the standard deviation. If you knew population standard deviation, you used? Yeah, that's great. If you didn't know population, you knew the sample standard deviation, and you used T. If you didn't know that, well, news to you. Why? Because a z-score is based on sigma. If you don't know sigma, how are you supposed to find z? Does that look familiar to you? Geez, I hope so. You, know, you, you should have used that on your test, right? A z-score is x bar minus mean over the square uh, sigma divided by the square root of n. t is very similar. x bar minus mean over, but you don't know sigma, you only know s. Over the square root of n. Remember that this happens when sigma is known. This happens when sigma is not known. That's a population standard deviation. If sigma is known. Are you going to try to put a couple of these steps together? Yes, no? You okay with stating the claim, right? And the opposite. We haven't done this yet, but, well, we haven't done that yet. We've done this stuff before. We, we've done all that already. Now we're just tying together some, some loose ends, putting everything together. Here's a survey. A sample of 703 companies found that 61% of CEOs were male. Here's the claim. By the way, your, your homework problems and your test problems will all say something about a claim. You'll say, like, test the claim that blah, 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 blah. Or the claim is blah, 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 blah. It'll ask you to test some claim. I'm telling you, here's the claim. Most CEOs are men. Here's the idea for you, all right? We're, we're, getting, we're getting more into the, the process of hypothesis testing. Here's the idea. You can't just look at that and go, well, clearly. I mean, the sample said 61% were male, so clearly most are male. Well, it was a sample. It's a fairly large sample. But is it different? The question is this with hypothesis testing. Is it different enough from this, from, from this claim, or is it, is it different enough from some statement to prove it right? That's the idea. Is it different enough? Is 61% big enough to say that most are, are, are male? Would 52% be big enough? Would 51% be big enough? Would 55% be big enough? You don't know, do you? Because there's no way to just determine that. Because uh, is a sample going to reflect perfectly the population? Yes. 